Hello, my name is Jonas Gonzalez. I am a PhD student at the Italian Institute of Technology. Today, I will present you our work on a bio-inspired architecture for autonomous transfer learning for object detection. Deep learning has revolutionized object detection, reaching state-of-the-art performances and continues to improve years after years. New architectures with increased accuracy and faster inference times allow to explore these deep networks in real time in robotics platform, smartphone and computer. But how do these networks work? One approach for object detection using deep networks is to decompose the task into sub-problems. The first step is to find a set of possible bounding box which may contain an object. As illustrated in this figure, the input image is passed through a pre-trained CNN network to extract a convolutional feature map. This convolutional feature map is used by the region proposal network to extract bounding box of interest and select the one that may contain object. From this candidate's bounding boxes and the feature extracted by the CNN network, a region of interest pooling network wrapped the patches to a fixed size to fit them to fully connected layers for localization and classification. This is the general idea behind region proposal networks approach like faster RCNN, which was, was one, of, one of the first hand-to-hand -hand trainable model for object detection using only deep learning. However, models like faster RCNN are computationally demanding due to the region proposal network. To optimize time performance, a new architecture was proposed called single shot detector. The idea is to remove the region proposal network and use the concept of default boxes or anchors. The network has to decide which of these default boxes to use for a given image and then predict offset for these anchors and classify them to obtain the final prediction. The core idea of SSD network is then predicting category scores and box offset for a fixed set of default bounding boxes using small convolutional features applied to feature maps. As illustrated in the figure, the model produces prediction of different scale from feature map of different scales and explicitly separate prediction by aspect ratio. The advantage of SSD architecture is a simple hand-to-hand -hand training which allow real-time inference while keeping high accuracy. But to achieve state-of-the-art performances independently of the model, it is mandatory to have data, a lot of data. Without this large dataset containing millions of annotated images, such as COCO or ImageNet, none of the presented networks would have reached state-of-the-art performances. But collecting and updating such amount of image is time-consuming, as it is done by humans, and has to be repeated for new class or object in new environment. Moreover, when applying this model to robotics, an issue arises how to deal with the changing environment and new object the robot will encounter. While performing well on benchmark dataset, deep learning models suffer a drop of performance when applied to robotic platforms, mainly due to the environment robots are deploying, which was not presented in the training dataset. Robots, due to hardware space limitation and the requirement to run on real time, usually cannot use high resolution camera which are not the standard in benchmark dataset. All these factors put constraint for the deployment of deep learning in robotics and require a new approach to deal with this limitation. Deep learning algorithm works well as long as the data they are trained on is representative of the final task. Robot, thanks to their different sensors such as cameras, microphones, and even tactile sensors, can acquire a huge amount of data which could be used to train those networks. Moreover, robots being physically present in the world can act and interact with the environment, giving a variety in the data they can acquire, which is useful for deep learning approach to generalize. While robots can have access theoretically to infinite data, they miss a way to learn from them in an autonomous way. More specifically, when considering a supervised learning approach, they need a way to label those data. The challenge is then to propose new technique to format and process the data coming from the robot sensor to use them in a supervised learning approach. That is, a way to autonomously annotate the data of the robot sensors. In this work, 
We propose to address this challenge by taking inspiration on how babies learn using facilitation mechanisms such as visual attention or active vision to propose a computational framework that can automatically process the raw data of the robot sensors and process them to perform supervised learning. We took advantage of transfer learning approach where deep networks trained on big dataset can be used as generic feature extractor to reduce the training time to adapt to new scenarios and objects. We humans learn through interaction with the world and robots being embodied could follow a similar learning path. To learn, we use facilitation strategy like visual attention, which allow us to focus on a particular point, retaining only the most salient information. This process coupled with active vision gives a facilitation mechanism to perform complex tasks like segmentation as not all the visual information is used, but only a part. Humanoid robot can reproduce this behavior, facilitating the processing of the information coming from the sensor. For example, by selectively look one object at a time, this allows to break down a complex scene into several simple parts, which can be used to create a dataset for learning. We integrated this idea into a unified computational framework, which allows the hiker robot to explore the scene as a human could do using a visual attention mechanism and active vision. The visual attention module is used to guide the focus of the robot on silent region of the input image, which is then used as a proxy for the stereo vision pipeline. By retaining only a part of the information, this facilitates the segmentation of the object from the background. Once the object is segmented, the robot can track it, which gives a collection of data points that can be used to create a dataset. We tested our computational framework in a natural and ecological interaction where the iCAP robot is in front of objects randomly disposed in a table while interacting with a human partner. Using our framework, the robot can explore autonomously the set of objects displayed in front of him, collecting meaningful data that can be used to train a deep network for object localization. The first step in our framework is the attention module, which is used by the robot to explore the scene in an autonomous way. As you can see from the image, the visual attention focuses on silent parts of the input image, as for example the ball. This allows the robot to trigger an ocular movement towards the point of interest and put the focus on this region of the image, which is used to facilitate the segmentation process. The second step in our architecture is a vergence mechanism that takes the point of focus from the attention module and aligns the region centered on this point at the same location on both images, as you can see in the steric image on the top. We then compute a zero disparity map, which is used to segment the object from the background, as you can see on the middle figure. This process allows to extract only the relevant information from the initial point of focus here the ball, discarding the other informa information. Using the attention model used to only focus on a part of the image, facilitating the segmentation process. All this pipeline is inspired by the vision system of human, where binocular movements help to focus and segment the object from the background. Finally, the last part of our framework is to use the extract template from the segmentation process to let the robot perform object tracking and collect data points of the object in the autonomous way. As it could happen in an interaction between infant and the parents, the human partner shows the object to the robot, which can track the object and save the image and the associated bounding box, collecting meaningful data points relative to the initial attended object. So far, our framework allows the robot to selectively attend and segment the object in front of him, creating a dataset of objects and their corresponding bounding boxes. The last part of information needed to train an object detection network is the label associated with each object. To extract the label, we use the proprioceptive information of the robot to create a memory of where the objects were or originally located. As you can see on the image, for example, the ball will be assigned with the label object 1 as it was at the right of the robot, whereas the book, for example, will have different label. We separate each object using this information using a cluster algorithm that provides the generic 
Labo to retrain the object detection network. Following our pipeline, allow the robot to create a label dataset in an autonomous way, which we use in a transfer learning fashion. We use pre-trained network on big datasets such as COCO or ImageNet and reuse the early layers as generic feature extractor and only retrain the top of the network, the last layer as represented in red in this figure. This reduces the training time and the amount of data needed while keeping high accuracy. On a small GPU, it took around one hour to retrain the network until convergence. Running our framework took the robot around 10 minutes to collect the dataset with an average of 700 images for each class. We chose to test our framework with five objects that were already present in the Cocoa dataset to compare the performances of the network before and after retraining. We chose three middle-sized objects, the, the ball, the peluche, and the book, and more challenging object, the bottle and the cup. As you can see from sample of the training set, our approach worked well for big objects like the ball or the peluche, but produced bad data point for small objects with too much background, like for the bottle. To test our architecture with the autonomously gathered dataset, we created a test set with five new instances for each object present in the training set with a different background. We computed the mean average precision with an intersection of union of 50% for both models before and after retraining. We achieved an improvement of 30% with the faster RCN and network and only 4% with the SSD model. The poor increase of accuracy with the SSD model can be explained by the fact that we didn't fine tune the hyperparameters. For example, it is well known that choosing carefully the set of ventures is a crucial parameter for SSD architecture, which, which could have improved the gain of accuracy. The reason we choose not to fine tune the hyperparameters and keep the default one was to propose an autonomous pipeline where no human supervision was required. To have more insight on where the network improved using our framework, we compute the map score for each class for the faster RCNN network. We can see that we gain in accuracy for big objects, especially with the toy and the ball, and a little bit with the book. But we had little or no improvement for small objects like the cup or bottle. This actually showed the limitation of our approach in its current form, where for small objects, the vision pipeline failed to produce good data, and consequ consequently, the network failed to learn this object. So to conclude, in this work, we wanted to propose an architecture that allowed the iCurve robot to explore autonomously a scene and learn to detect this object. We integrated visual and attention and active vision and showed that it can be successful to guide the learning of the robot and explore the scene by identifying all the salient region, in our case, all the different objects, and collect a suitable dataset that can be used in a transfer learning approach to retrain a deep object localization network. With this work, we think that this could be a solution for one limitation of deep learning, that is the need of annotated data when we need to adapt to new object and environment. We are aware about the limitation of our architecture, especially with the failure to produce good data for small object. To scope with this issue, we will in the future improve our segmentation mechanism to take into account other features, such as color or texture. This work was also for us a validation step toward a more complex architecture to develop a system to perform long life learning with robotic platform. While in this work we consider only one interaction and use generic label, we want to extend this architecture to perform continual learning for object detection. The idea is to use a joint attention mechanism where the human interact naturally with the robot and give the word associated with an object that can be used into an autoencoder to extract a Latin representation, which can be then used as a label for the object. It will also be useful as the Latin representation can be used by the decoder network to reproduce the audio and thus allow the robot to pronounce the name of the object. Thank you for your attention. I want to thank my group of research that helped me to conduct my experiment and doing my work, and also my supervisor that helped me in this paper. If you want more detail about this work or the project we are conducting in our lab, you can contact us. Thank you.